Book Dragons! I'm back here for day 13 of Bookmas. So we are gonna wrap up the books that I finished reading in the first half of December. I will admit I'm definitely on a reading kick. I will say that September, October, November were pretty bad. Like I had a lot of slumpiness and I just was really really unfocused but I feel like I'm back which is great because I hate being slumpy. It is like not, it doesn't feel good when I'm slumpy so I like to like be reading consistently and be listening consistently and that just happened this month and it worked out super well. So I have 10 things to wrap up with you just so that by the end of the year or the end of the month my update is not like 30 minutes long because it might be if I read at this pace and I have like a week off next week is going to be really really slow and chill so hopefully I get a lot of reading done. So the first book I'm going to chat about is Christmas in the Scottish Highlands um and this was like a mis like not like a mystery but it was like kind of remind me of reading like a Hallmark movie and I really enjoyed it I gave it four stars here is a photo and then we'll talk about this author and this book so photo four stars really enjoyed it was a quick read and it was one of the only books I listened to on Kindle Unlimited but I have been liking that service so hopefully someone gets me gets it for me for Christmas and I can keep listening to it so Let's get into the summary. So this is like a very classic like Hallmark movie trope. Um, you have a girl, she lives in this Scottish town. She accidentally runs over her neighbor and she has to like breaks her ankle so she has to move into this woman's like big mansion and help take care of her and her animals and a snarky nephew comes and thinks that this woman is like trying to like swindle her grandmother out of money and it is just a very very cute read I really really liked it there was a snarky romance but the thing that I highlighted me about it is the um is the um the relationship between the character like the people and the townspeople like it gave me like Lake Eden vibes and Hannah Swanson but I just loved all the characters and I really like Donna Ashford's writing style it's very very quick it's very very charming the town had like a dynamic that I really enjoyed and the romance was grumpy sunshine there was the, the the main character was a teacher sorry my puppy keeps coming in and out because I just got home from work and she's not pleased that I'm not giving her attention guessy guessy <laughs> um but I really liked it and I gave it four stars and I've read more books by this author throughout this month and I really have been enjoying my listening experience so the next book that I picked up was a physical book and that was Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. This is the author that wrote The Charm Offensive and I really like this book. I did give it five stars and it was just a really like enjoyable read. So you basically follow a main character named Ellie and she works at like I think it's like a bakery I think and she um the year before she wound up having a fling with a woman on the night of Christmas and she never saw her again. So she winds up going into a fake dating or fake marriage relationship with her boss and because she needs money and her boss needs a fake marriage to get her his inheritance. Little does she know the person she's fake marrying is the brother of the woman she hooked up with the summer before um and she had a job at like a um a comic place she was like an animator and she got fired so throughout this book it's broken up into like chapters and then you see like the written part of the snowy the web comic that she wrote and it was fun i liked it i think that it was just a very interesting read and one that i really like fled through um, I love the fam. I love the found family dynamics in this book, especially because Ellie doesn't really have a family. So a lot of the found family elements was very, very capturing for me, and I enjoyed that. It was also set at like a cabin, so there was a lot of Christmas stuff, and it was great. I gave it five stars. I want to try to go back and read the Charm Offensive and see how I feel, but this worked for me. And I think if you're looking for a really, really quick read to read in the lead up to Christmas Day, because it does take place over a couple of days, I would read this, and it does have an extended epilogue. I liked it. It, ha it All the elements worked for me and it was fun and I give this one five stars for a review. The next book I picked up was for the Reindeer Readathon as were as a couple of other ones but this was Eight Nights of Flirting by Hannah Reynolds. This is a Hanukkah romance and I really like this and I gave it four stars. Here is a pretty photo and let's get into it.
you don't find nearly enough holiday romances that are not about like about other holidays other than Christmas so this one had so many elements that I just liked you followed a main character and she is really determined um to get a man this holiday season and she wants to kind of make a play for another guy but she sort of snowed in with a person she had a crush on a while ago and they sort of team up and it's like like lessons in flirting um and just like a second chance hate to more romance that is my favorite trope i read like four of those books this year like hate to friends to more and i just love it because it gives so much history to the characters and the hate makes sense because they were in a like they were friends friends before so the hate to me makes sense that is the only reason like hate to more really works for me but this one was fun i think i learned a lot about like the jewish culture and the jewish fate it also gave me 10 blind dates vibe by ashley elson because there's a really really big family involved i didn't feel as connected to the family as i did in 10 blind dates just because i felt like they weren't all individually fleshed out there was also some mystery and intrigue that were connected i liked it i gave it four stars and i would definitely read more by this author in the future but it was a super fun read and i really like the jewish aspects to it so yeah i would definitely recommend this one especially if you're looking for another like snowy read with the lead up to a holiday i would check this one out um and the next book i read was snowflakes and secrets by donna ashford this is the second book in that series with the christmas and the christmas and the scottish highlands because it's set in the same exact town but it follows like a side character so here is the photo of this i also really like this and give this one four stars Sorry, it's called Snowflakes, Snowflakes and Secrets in the Scottish Highlands. So this is the second book in the series. But you follow this main character. I'm so bad at names. But she winds up going to this small town that you met in Christmas in the Scottish Highlands. And she winds up having to run this animal sanctuary for her aunt. And our main character is very, very protected. She had a pretty bad accident. And she's sort of like a little bit isolated. And her brothers are very, very protective of her. And she's a writer, but she kind of had her dreams crushed. A couple of months back when she kind of sent out stuff for things so her brothers are super protective and she winds up developing a relationship with this vet because she's kind of working with these animals and she's like their caretaker i really love this book the town was so prevalent in the story you did see the characters from book one as well because the, the teacher made an appearance with her students because the main character was kind of helping them on like a writing project and the main character was acting as secret santa for the whole town which i thought was very very fun so yeah, it was good. It was snowy. There was a lot of elements. The animals really like hit me and it was just really very cute. I gave it four stars and I really like this author so much so that I picked up another book in a different series, which I'm currently listening to. Hope to finish that tonight when I'm editing and doing stuff. But yeah, definitely good four stars for me and I would definitely read more by this author in the future. Um, and then the next book I picked up for the um, Reindeer Reading Pop, reading a book with a trope that you like. I love cozy mysteries, so I want to pick in Blackmail and Babinka by M Mia P. Masala, which is a teacher, Rosa Kitchen mystery, and this is another Christmas mystery or a Christmas romance, but it's not really a romance. This, I mean, it is sort of a romance, but it's definitely more of a mystery. Um, but this is the second book in the Tita Rosa mystery series. It is Arsene Kododobo and Hamasade and Halo Halo. This is the third book. I think I like this book probably the least I would say but I did enjoy it I gave it like four stars I just think that we didn't really get to know the mystery characters a lot like I felt like you know we met them in like 30 pages and then I just never felt like I really were connected to them throughout the whole book so that was a little bit disappointing but you follow this you know we followed Leah this whole but this whole series but her former cousin comes back to town and has some dealings with his business and a murder pops up and she's just sort of solve it um it was very very compelling it was a fun mystery i just didn't feel connected to the side characters at all but i did like it and i gave it four stars and i'm hopeful that i we will get more in this season i think we have murder and mono which is coming out um soon so we definitely are getting another one which i'm happy definitely my favorite cozy mystery series that i've kept reddit reading this year the other ones have been a little bit disappointing but this one is definitely a strong suit and i would definitely recommend that you check it out um and then the next book that i picked up was a surprise because i've been doing a reading club with my friend evie at work she's actually still reading it 
Um, but I wound up finishing The Seven Husband, Husbands of, of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've never read a Taylor Jenkins Reid, so I read it with her, and we're reading it together. I will have to admit, I like this. I picked up the audiobook midway through, and I think that's the be definitely the preferred way to read it. This book is everywhere. Everyone talks about this book. I think it was a little bit overhyped for me, I'll be a little bit honest. But it was fun. It was a fun read. It, you know, it has, you know, if you probably know this topic because everyone talks about it. But I was captivated. I will admit, like I was captivated. I liked learning about Evelyn Hugo's past. That was interesting. I liked how the book was structured. I like how you felt like you were being told it as an audience. The only thing I didn't love was like the Monique parts because I felt like you didn't really get to know Monique and either I needed you to give me more of Monique or not give me Monique at all. So I felt like that was a little bit jarting darting for me as like a reader but I loved Evelyn Hugo I loved all the marriages and I loved how cutthroat she was and how it really looked at the entertainment industry through her eyes it was heartwarming shocking surprising I will say that as well the ending I did not see coming I had to listen to like three different times to make sure I was understanding it but I gave it four and a half stars and I would definitely read more by this author in the future but I think I'm gonna preface to read through audio because I think I like her writing, writing a little bit better when I listen to it but yeah, it was a it was an enjoyable read. I'm happy I finally picked it, and I'm excited to see what my in book, my next book club choice with my friend is, because I have been enjoying doing that with her. So four stars, really really liked it so far. And now I'll talk about the other books that I read. So the next book we're all physical, which I'm super excited about. So I picked up this Jesse's Secret Language by Chow Chow. This is the Twelfth book in the Babysitter's Club graphic novel series. I'm really liking this. I think this is definitely like a new favorite for me in that series because it just was really unique. But you basically follow Jessie and she's a junior member of the Babysitter's Club. And she winds up having to babysit for a deaf character. And it really like talks about the deaf experience and talked about ASL and talked about all those things in just a really digestible way. And it also had a lot of friendship elements. I think the only downside is like you didn't get to see the Babysitter's Club as much meeting wise. Like there was a couple of little things and there was a couple of tie ups that I wish had been sort of like connected. But I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. I really don't have anything this month that I really like hated. Um, I just had all okay books or really, really good books. But this one was good. I gave it four stars. The 13th book comes out at the very, very end of December, which I'm definitely going to be picking up probably in early January because it comes out on, like, a weird day. Um, but yeah, I wound up really liking this one. And I will probably bring this to school and pass it on to one of my students who I know likes Babysitter's Club. But yeah, the rep was really, really good. And I think that this would be a great one to put in a library for students, like middle school kids, because it does te teach about deaf culture and deaf life in a really accessible way. Um, and the next book that we're going to chat about, I don't know where my dust, dust jacket went, is Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This was one of my highly anticipated, like, um, five-star read productions, and I will admit it was a five-star read for me. I enjoyed it. So you basically follow these two characters, well, you get one point of view, but you get a prince named Cyrus and a seer named Violet, and they are sort of in a contemptuous relationship. Again, I've sort of been talking about... In a couple of my reads, the trope of like friends to hate to friends to more. And that is definitely what this book is. Like sort of like an eight nights of flirting. I love this book. I thought it was rich. I thought it did Faye really, really well and really, really interestingly. It's been a bit since I read a Faye book that I loved and that was like with Cruel Prince. This did Faye's differently, but it had a lot of prophecy and stuff like that. A lot about fates and gods. And I just love the characters' relationships. It was very, very... It was very, like, it was very, um, you know, luscious. It gave me Belladonna vibes, and it was a bit of a, you know, like, a upper YA. It did have more content than I was expecting. I really liked it. I did not see the ending coming, and I'm really excited for book two. There was a lot of tropes in here that I liked. There was, you know, Cyrus was a twin, and I just enjoyed it. There was a lot of side characters. There was a lot of plots I didn't see coming. A lot of political intrigue. It worked for me. I gave it five stars, and I'm super excited to read book two in the future. Um, and then I did, like, a bit of, like, a mass reading just to sort of catch up for this because I knew that I wanted to read a couple more books. So I picked up The Van Beekers on the Road, which is the sixth book in the Van Beeker series. This is set in the summer, and it's set right after book five when they have to kind of go rescue their dad, and they go on kind of a road trip that the granddad planned. 
Um, I like this one. I don't think it was my favorite in the series, but I did like the road trip element. There was a lot of miscommunication with the siblings, which I enjoyed. It wasn't my favorite, but I enjoyed the elements of going on a road trip. I did miss them being in the brown sort of New York City because I feel like the house is like a character. But there was a lot of found family stuff, a lot of talk about growing up and getting older and going to college. But I liked it, and I thought that the road trip was an interesting element, and it was good, and I gave it four stars and I am excited to read book six when it comes out in 2023 because I will admit this is probably one of the only contemporary middle grade series that I have really enjoyed normally I you know I lean towards um fantastical stories but this one was just fun and I love the big family I'm an only child maybe that's why and the last book I'm going to chat about in this video is Lore Olympus vol volume two again this was another like five star read production and I loved it but I have to admit the highlight of this book is definitely the illustrations and I'm probably going to keep these books just for that because these illustrations are so pretty, so stunning. This is a Persephone's and Hades retelling with some side characters as well. I will say in book one there was a sexual assault on page. In number two it sort of deals with the aftermath of that but I really liked it. I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to be spoilery but just know stunning pictures, stunning art style, and I will, I'm really excited to read book three. I was going to read volume three sooner, but I think I'm going to take a little bit of a break because I'm in the middle of a couple of other little things. But yeah, those are the 10 books I read for the first half of December. Let me know in the comments what is some of your top reads. I would love to know. I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be Riley Bane of Thorns. But I'll talk to you guys for my next reading book miss tomorrow, and I'll talk to you guys for my next reading update later. Bye, friends.